Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio, and today we are taking a look at using FL Studio with Console One Mixing System. Now, FL Studio is known for its nonlinear workflow, and people like the idea of having their laptop, their native plugins, and being able to mix with a mouse or a trackpad. I get that. But there is a big benefit to being able to have an external hardware control surface to work with you during the creative process. There's also a benefit to having some additional third-party plugin processing, which I'll get to also. Let's start by taking a look at one of the biggest benefits of having a control surface, which is being able to put your hands on faders, pull your tracks down, and being able to push them up until they're in the perfect musical place. I'm using the previous generation of Console One fader, as the new one is not yet available. My master fader is located on the left-hand side, And notice how easy and smooth it is to zero out the master fader at Unity. Let's start by bringing all my faders down. I'll bring them up one at a time until this basic loop comes together in a musical way. In addition to fader control, Console One Mixing System allows you to control your pan and solo and mute. So let's see what that looks like. On this fader unit, we have the ability to solo, mute, and pan. We select our tracks at the bottom. The top unit allows us to select tracks and use solo, mute, and pan on the right side. Let's see how this looks and feels in a session. It's quick to solo tracks or remove an element with the mute button. Let's pan our hi-hat. Now, let's hear that in solo. Console One has the ability to send to aux tracks from the hardware in most DAWs. Due to the way FL Studio sets up its routing, we cannot use these sends. However, we can set up our tracks to send to the aux reverb and delay tracks and then use the faders to control the level of those tracks, which gives us a great musical benefit when producing or performing with FL Studio Live. You can see that I've set up separate reverb and delay faders for my drums, and then a third one for my synths. Notice as I balance my tracks with tactile control over the reverb and delay levels, but the tracks come together more quickly than if they were totally dry or if I needed to reach for a mouse to send to an aux track. Now let's take a look at how to get set up with Console One Mixing System by using the VST3 plugin to get control over FL Studio. You can see I've switched over to the new Console One channel Mark III. To get started, you want to select all of your tracks by holding Shift and Command on a Mac or Control on a PC when you're selecting them. Once I select the tracks, I'll find the VST3 version of the Console One plugin and add it to all my tracks. I starred the plugin to make it easier to find. You see I get a warning that I'm about to add the plugins to 45 tracks. I'll hit OK, and then it takes a few seconds to load onto every track. You could also save time in the future by starting from a template in FL Studio that has the Console One plugin across all your tracks to begin with. 
Now, let's turn on the console one on-screen display and you can see all of the track names carry over along with the track colors. Since my master fader is located on track one, each of my tracks is offset by one, but that's super easy to remember and follow. Now that we've inserted the VST3 plugin, we can now adjust DAW fader volume, solo, mute, and pan. I've selected a snare stem called Meat. Let's open the top end. High pass it. Add some FET compression. And transient shape the attack. Listen to my piano. I'll open up the top. I'll use a second EQ to sculpt out some resonance. Listen to my kick drum. It doesn't translate on small speakers. Let's use the drive to add some upper harmonics and help it cut. You can even see the additional harmonic content on the analyzer. I'll add some punch, but remove some sustain to help focus it more. This trem guitar part is cool, but it's too far forward. Let's use the core panner to place it further back in the room and skew it to the side. Automating high and low pass sweeps is a breeze, and you can even adjust the slope of the filters directly from the hardware. Now let's take a listen to console one across our master bus. To start, let's begin with some bus compression to tie the whole mix together. Then we'll make some gentle musical EQ choices. Thanks for watching. So what are your thoughts? Leave some comments in the chat below. And as always, please help support this channel by liking this video and hitting subscribe.